I actually had to walk back to 4th Street because at the very first of the confrontation where I was struck, my police radio actually fell off my belt and into the middle of 4th Street. I had to go retrieve my radio. I got on the radio. Uh, I was out of breath. I said, uh, I think Viper 32, start me a commanding officer and EMS for a subject uh, who just tried to fight us. And I asked for a commanding officer because any incident where we use any type of force, we immediately call for a commanding officer or a sergeant to come to the scene and uh, take pictures and do what's called an air report, which is an after incident report, basically documenting everything that happened. Okay. Uh, did you call for, did you make any calls to, uh, uh, to any emergency medical personnel? Uh, yes, I called. At the same time I was calling for my camp commanding officer, I was calling for EMS. Okay, for a subject, EM well, I, I believe I said he was bleeding from his nose or apparent broken nose, something along those lines. Okay. Did, did the uh, EMS arrive? Yes, they did. Okay. Do you know um, uh, what happened after EMS arrived? Did they take him to, did they take Mr. Masters away? Uh, EMS transported Mr. Masters to University Hospital and Detective Browning rode with EMS to the hospital. I followed in my unmarked vehicle. Okay. Um, the the uh, let me just take you back to Fourth uh, and M Street, and after everything has subsided, yes, sir. And from what I understand, once the defendant was struck in the nose, did his conduct did, did that type of conduct cease? Yes, immediately. Okay. okay. Did you recall? Do you recall having any conversations or? whether Mr. whether this defendant made any statements to you all while you were there on that scene? Directly after the incident, once we've moved him and I called on the radio, I kind of just took a moment to compose myself and try to figure out what's going on and kind of looked at Mr. Masters, who looked it back at me and said, you just want to fuck me, don't you? That's what Mr. Masters said back to me. He looked directly at me and said, you just want to fuck me, don't you? And I said, no, sir, I'm just trying to figure out what exactly just happened and why this happened this way. Okay. Did he make any comments after that? Uh, we kind of got into some questioning of where he was coming from, why this had, had occurred. He said, I was just on my way to the store. I had the change in my hand. I was going to go get a beer. Me and my girlfriend had been fighting. She went on a date with another girl, and I'm afraid that she's cheating on me, and I'm just in a bad mood. That's why this happened. So he said he was on his way to get a beer, had nothing but change in his hand. And myself and Detective Browning actually went in the middle of M Street and picked up all of his change and put it in a glove for him. So we could give his change back to him. Okay. Did you did you ask? Do you recall yourself asking this defendant at any time while you are were on the scene at Fourth uh, and M Street as to uh, uh, why he did not stop after you shouted police? Not directly why he didn't stop, more or less why he approached us in the way he did. He said he basically had no choice. He ran up on us. We called his bluff. I started to get out of my car. He had no choice to throw a punch. He ran up on us and had to throw the punch. Okay, now, now, he said, now when, you, when you say we called his bluff, are those? Meaning I think he was attempting to charge at us to get us to leave, or I'm not really sure what his state of mind was, but he charged at us. Saw me start to get out of the vehicle and immediately swung on me. Okay. Give me just a second, Your Honor. Do you remember seeing? Uh, do you remember seeing this defendant's injuries at the scene prior to EMS arriving? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Let me show you what I've marked as Commonwealth Exhibit. I'm sorry, you're on a five for purposes of identification. Thank you. For purposes of identification, Commonwealth Exhibit number five for identification only. Do you recognize what's in that photograph? Yes, sir. It's Mr. Masters. Okay. Do you remember seeing Mr. Masters in this condition while you all were still on the scene? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And does this photograph fairly and accurately depict the way he looked shortly after the altercation? Yes, sir, it does. With the, okay. Judge Commonwealth's exhibit number Any comment? five. No, Your Honor. Thank you. For admission. You'll be admitted in evidence. Thank you.
At any time, uh, Detective, did, did and, and I'm just going to talk, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to ask you this question now, and I'll ask Detective Browning later. Uh, did you attempt to arrest uh, the defendant? Yes, sir. During the entire struggle, once I was struck in the face, my goal was to put him in handcuffs. And did he resist arresting? Yes, sir. Judge. I, and, okay. I, judge, I, can we, can we, yes. I rephrased the question, Judge. All right. And, uh, because I think it was just a, like, it, 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 well, well, I'll go ahead and let him. It's drawing a legal conclusion. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and, I realize and, it. And it came out the wrong way, and I apologize. Oh. Mr. Price is going to have to rephrase his question and to describe the events that night, or at least when we, from the point we left off, I guess. Right, Thank Mr. you, Price. Your Honor. When, when you uh, attempted to arrest him, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what his reaction was? Yes. Once, basically, at first, I was just trying to defend myself from getting struck. Once Detective Browning took both of us to the ground, I was at him. I said, you're under arrest, you're under arrest. And I was trying to grab his hands. I said, put your hands behind your back. And he continued to fight with us. That, that's at which point, as he continued to fight with us, that's where I said, you're under arrest. And was trying to put his hands behind his back. Is when I swung, missed, came back. And is it your opinion here today or is it your testimony here today that you were trying to affect an arrest at that time sir yes sir i was did you feel at any time uh detective that uh that you uh felt like you would be physically injured because of the encounter with Mr. Uh, with with the uh, defendant, honestly, at the very beginning of it, I was afraid I was going to get killed. I thought he was coming to shoot me. Okay. Do you know how long this all took place? I mean, from the moment, and let me just try to put some parameters here. From the moment that he began, the defendant began to put his hands up, up until the time y'all had him to do. I'd say approximately a minute. It was definitely less than two minutes, uh, no less than one minute, give or take a minute or two. And is it your testimony that you did not accompany the uh, defendant and Detective Browning to the uh, hospital? That is true, sir. Okay. All right, Judge, can I just have a second, please? Sure. Everybody okay? All right, that's all the questions I have at this point, Mr. All right. The Stegman. Stegmeyer. The Stegmeyer. Sure. Afternoon, Detective Gassi. Good afternoon, sir. Ian Stegmeyer, Defense Counsel. He went through the academy, right? Sir. You got a lot of training. Yes, sir. Right? I mean, they continue to train you ad nauseum, don't they? For situations like this, correct? Yes, sir. To testify in court? Correct? Yes, sir. To make sure you do everything else correct and that you can articulate it, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, one of the things you get trained on is police reports, right? Yes, sir. You have to document everything you do, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So that you can refer back to it almost a year later for trial sometimes, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's important to be as detailed as possible, right? Yes, sir. Everything you do? Yes, sir. Everything you say? Yes, sir. All right, something else you get in training is um, use of force continuum. Yes, right? sir. And use of force continuum 
and correct me if I'm wrong, because my perception may be different, but it starts with uniform presence. Officer right? presence, yes, sir. An announcement of office. Yes, sir. Right? And then from there it goes to verbal commands. Verbal commands, empty hand techniques. Yes, sir. Correct. Um, empty hand strikes. Uh, not yet, sir. Okay, there's CS uh, and uh, pepper spray. Then you have electronic control weapon, which is your taser. Okay. Then you have soft empty hands, and then you have impact weapons, which would be a baton. Okay, and then lethal force. Yes, and right. lethal lethal force. And lethal force that. isn't just a firearm, right? Not at all, sir. It could be anything that could cause. It could be death. an impact weapon to the head. Correct. As as far as impact weapon being a baton, a metal baton. Right. Yes, sir. And it could also be a, a vehicle. Yes, right? sir. You can run someone over with the car, right? Yes, sir. About how many times do you follow up? Do follow up training per year? Uh, follow up on training on what, sir? Just Every, uh, firearms. I, I believe we do firearms twice a year. Self defense we don't get. It's a, on your own to do. Okay. Self defense. Uh, we have one week of mandatory training, which can cover a lot of things, from problem solving to driving to firearms, any type of number of things. Okay. Now, when you do the physical aspects of of this training sometimes you you and you mentioned SWAT training is a big one you you train under stressful conditions yes, right? sir. and it's important to train under stressful conditions because you have to get used to stressful conditions right yes, because a person that um, doesn't have this training you know just a normal person off the street they have trouble hearing during um, stress conditions don't they certainly yes sir and have trouble seeing yep. during stress conditions. So you train so you don't have trouble hearing or seeing or recalling facts during stressful yes, conditions, sir. right? Now, let's go ahead and talk about the, a little bit more about your experience. Uh, you mentioned you were assigned to uniform patrol before you were in yes. Viper, yes, sir. right? And you um, are familiar with the KRS. Yes, sir. This is the Kentucky Revised Statutes, for yes, those who may not know. And you were uh, responsible for traffic enforcement, right? Uh, partially. Partially. I never took place in any type of traffic enforcement. Okay. Okay. But you're, you're familiar with the traffic laws, though, right? Yes, sir. And um, you're not required to cross in a crosswalk if there isn't a crosswalk, right? If there's no vehicles coming, then you are not required to cross in a crosswalk. Okay. Correct. But if there's no crosswalk, you, you can just cross however if there's vehicles coming then you have mm -hmm. to uh, what's the word I'm looking for you yield? The, yes yield to the vehicle okay fair enough and there's no crosswalk at the intersection of fourth and M right? to my knowledge there is not okay and to my you, knowledge right okay and there's no uh, traffic signal either right there's no traffic signal Just oh, there, there's stop signs, stop signs on, on both M, sides right? of entry yes mr. short can you bring up um, that diagram, please. <clears throat> Set it up right there, if you don't mind. Detective Cassie, I'm going to show you what's I'm marking for identification as defense one. Yes, sir. Can you see it okay? I can. Do you recognize it? And I know it's not to scale, and I know I'm not an artist, but do you recognize generally what it is? Yes, sir. Can I you do. tell the members of the jury? It's uh, the intersection of 4th and M Street. 4th Street is shown in the middle uh, vertically. It's going north and south, and M Street is horizontal going east to west. Okay. And that's a fair and accurate depiction. Yes, sir. And it's fair anyways. It's not to scale. Okay. And on the night of... December 7th, 2012. You were, uh, I know there's no such thing as routine patrol, but you're on patrol of, of the area, right? Yes. Looking for violent criminals, because yes, that's sir. what you do, right? And jaywalkers aren't violent criminals, are they? It, they can lead to violent criminals, yes, Correct, sir. Correct, but they're not of their nature. Jaywalking in itself is not a violent offense. Correct. Yeah. Now, it was Lynn Alley that you saw this. Um, I believe it's it's on, a right? Flynn Alley, sir. Is it Flynn? Yes. Is it Finn Alley? Finn Alley, here you go. There we go. Put us ours together, we is got that it right. somewhere back here? Yes, sir. Okay. It's directly between 4th Street and 5th Street. Okay, now I'm going to draw Finn Alley, and I'm going to mark it, just so we know 